4.5 billion years ago, when the Great Rains ended, the world was covered in water. A little bit like the water you can see behind me here in Tigri in Iceland. But there weren't any mountains, hills or valleys. In fact, the entire Earth was like a big blue ball of water, with volcanic eruptions and lava spewing out each and everywhere. Now, life started to accumulate in that water. It was perfect. Now we had light, we had warmth and we had water, the perfect recipe for life to begin. But life was very, very simple in the early days. Here I'm holding some Icelandic seaweed, a very complex organism which photosynthesizes the light and turning it into energy. Early life was nothing like that. Very, very simple and very, very uncomplicated. Let's head up to the mountains here in the background where we're going to find a volcanologist is going to tell us exactly how it all began. Let's go. Now, when the great rains had finished, the level of water that accumulated on the planet had risen significantly. Behind me, you can see there is a lake, but all over the planet, there were 1.3 quintillion liters of water. And because the water was evaporating, we now had gases in the air. But the atmosphere wasn't like it is today. Today, the atmosphere is around 21% oxygen and 78% nitrogen, perfect for you and me, and all of these plants and animals to exist. But back in the Archean era, the atmosphere was mostly methane and ammonia, which is extremely poisonous for us to breathe in. So how did it change for life to form? Well, they say that it all happened with plants being able to provide oxygen for themselves using the energy from the sun, something we call photosynthesis. Let's head up to the top of the mountains and find somebody who can tell us all about it. Let's go. So the atmosphere had changed and the composition of Earth looked completely different. We were now in the Archaean era and we've walked up the mountains here to find a specialist who's going to explain to us exactly how life began. Marcos, how are you, sir? Hey, Gavin. Good to see you again. Yes, you too. Now, coming into the Archean era, we've got this, this earth. It's covered in, in lava. It dries. It's covered in basalt, a little bit like the rock I'm holding here and other rocks too. What happens next? It starts to rain. What happens to the, the look and feel of the earth? Exactly. So next, Earth is not as hospitable as it is now, but it's definitely not as a Dehadean. It starts to cool down, we're starting to form the oceans, and we still are lacking a lot of the features that we can see nowadays. So of course nowadays we are here surrounded by mountains, by fjords. There were not a lot of land back then. If you would have flown over Earth back in the beginning of the Archean, it would have been mostly an ocean and just a few spewing volcanoes here and there. Plate tectonics and the formation of the continents as we know today was not developed yet. Wow, and we have this lifeless planet covered in this liquid, this ocean, filled with rich nutrients and minerals, and then suddenly life springs out of nowhere What's the theory there? How does it appear? Well, it's, it's fascinating and it's one of those puzzling things still yet. This is one of the main questions that we have. Like the Big Bang is a big question here, the beginning of life exactly is a big question mark. We know some of the context, we know what should happen, but we don't know exactly for sure. So there's a couple of theories actually of how the very beginning of life started. There are some theories, for example, one that is the panspermius theory, that is that an asteroid brought already this seed for life from outer space. And there's another one that are just coined by many, many very famous scientists like Charles Darwin, that life started here on Earth and in the water, in this vast and expansive oceans, 
we had the possibility this soup of elements and chemical reactions where life began. Wow, and why are we sitting by this puddle? So we're sitting by this puddle because we know that if it happened on Earth and it happened definitely in the water where these chemical reactions, these different nutrients and this heat source was present. So this puddle here would be the perfect place. It's got heat coming from the sun, there's light also, and the Earth is quite warm. And we know that all three of those things make it perfect for life. Now, life then starts to change because we have these simple organisms living in the water. What are they feeding on? Yeah, so in the beginning, these are very, very simple organisms to our own standards of today. So these are microscopic organisms, we call them prokaryotes. And the similar thing that we can compare them today are modern day bacteria. Oh. They are unicellular, they don't have any nucleus and any organelles that have special functions, they just do one thing and it's surviving. And what is life to begin with and what's the difference between life and non-life? A lot of things move. So life has a few things in common. One thing is that it has a metabolism. It kind of fuels itself somehow. And we'll talk about this in a minute. Another feature that it has is that it can reproduce. It can duplicate itself. Different, different ways of reproducing along the way, but it definitely does that. And then it has some kind of self-replicating code to make it last in the future and evolve through time. Ah, so those okay. are the things that life needs. So you asked me about what it feed it off, and in the very beginning it feed it out of these chemicals wow. and the heat, and that was enough for this early life to go by. Uh, but we have something in the Archaean era called the boring billions. Now, we know it's actually not so boring because all of this is so interesting. What it means is there was a long space of time where the life that lived in a puddle, maybe just like this, didn't really do much. It was just getting by and learning how to live. But then something remarkable happened. What, what happened at the end of the Archaean era that takes us into the next era? Yeah, exactly. So this moment in time and really prokaryotes, this early life, take about 2 billion years of Earth's life. It's about 55% of all the time that life was on Earth was this very primitive life. And this is why we sometimes call it a boring billion, because there's not much happening in terms of evolution. This very primitive organisms stay and live for a long period of time without doing much, seemingly. So then what happens is that some of these creatures that were sustaining themselves only by these chemical reactions, they rise up to the surface and they learn a new treat, Ooh. a new superpower. Wow. So tell me more about this special skill, this superpower that these uh, organisms evolved to have. Yeah, so these prokaryotes, they still were very primitive organisms. They still were single-celled, but they learned this new treat of something that we call now photosynthesis. Ah, now what is, I've heard this name, photosynthesis. What, what happens? So photosynthetic organisms, what they do is they harness the energy of the sun. So we have a lot of energy that's coming from, from the sun all the time. And they learn how to convert that energy, this incoming solar radiation, into molecules that they are stored in their organisms. And they produce energy out of that with only water. And they don't do this alone in isolation. They consume something and give something back in return. Wow. So what they were doing is they were exchanging CO2 that was very abundant in the atmosphere and they were giving oxygen back to the atmosphere. Wow, and this would have changed the atmosphere and setting it up for success for organisms like us to breathe later on. Yes, exactly. What was fascinating about this moment in time is right up until life began, all of the changes in our planet were done by this inorganic phenomenon. So we talked about gravity, we talked about dust, we talked about the Big Bang. All of this was without life. And now it was life that was starting to change our planet. And this change would set us up for a great future ahead of us. Exactly. Now this week, we want you to take a look below and have a look at the chemical reaction that we want you to conduct in your classroom. Yes, we're going to ask you to create life, a little bit like the life that may have started in a puddle just like this around about four billion years ago. 
Marcos, it has been amazing to have you this week, yeah. and we'll see you all next time.